Good morning, everybody in Cambodia and Southeast Asia. And um, good evening to those people here in the US. And I guess it's the sometime in the middle of the night for those people in Europe. <laughs> So welcome everyone to uh, this CKS webinar. We're very happy that you can join us here today. And um, today we are very honored to have two very special guests with us who I will introduce in just one moment. Um, but first, before we get started, um, I just wanna go over a few housekeeping issues um, for this webinar today. So first of all, um, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Eve Zucker, I'm the president of CKS and I will be hosting this webinar, moderating it today. Um, and the format of the webinar today, it's gonna last an hour and a half. And the first hour, um, I will be, will, will be with our panelists here talking, I'll be talking with them some and I'll have a chance to share their work with you. And um, this second half hour approximately will be for our question and answer time. Um, and so I have a couple of requests regarding that. So if you are on Zoom, please put your questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat. Uh, if you are joining us on Facebook Live, then please put your questions in the chat on Facebook Live and we will do our best to answer those as well. Um, so those are the two things to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing is, is this webinar is being recorded. So please keep that in mind, um, uh, during, during the webinar and end with your questions. So, okay. Um, let's see, we can wait a couple more minutes, see if a couple more people come in and then we'll get started and I'll introduce our speakers here today. So, okay, let's start. Um, okay. So it's my pleasure to introduce our guest today. First of all, we have um, Jean Sien Kin, who is with us. And Hello. <laughs> Hello and, and welcome. Um, Jean Sien Kim is a graphic designer and co-founder of the association Le Circle des Amis de Van Nat, the Circle of Friends of Van Nat. His parents fled uh, Cambodia just after the fall of the Khmer Rouge and um, and they ended up in France where uh, Jean Sien was born and then raised. Um, later in his early twenties, Jean Sien began to explore his identity as the son of, a, of Cambodian immigrant parents. And in the course of his search, he met the artist and Tulsling survivor, uh, Van Nat. Um, and so, then the two of them developed a very close relationship over the years that they, they knew each other until Van Nat's death in 2011. So while Van Nat was still living, Jean Sien had offered to create a book of his paintings, uh, which is what we're here to talk about today. Um, and it's this book, and uh, which was published in March of 2022. And so that's that's what we'll be spending a little time with today. So I'm just really thrilled about it. It is a, a really wonderful work. Um, we also have with us today, uh, we have Rex May Yin, who is a contributor to the book. Welcome, Rex May. And Rex May Yin is an art curator, writer, and researcher, and he currently holds the position of program director at the Celepak Trachek Panik, a contemporary art space uh, by YK Art House in Phnom Penh. Yin is an Alpha Wood Scholar of the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London in the United Kingdom. He's a Southeast Asia Award Scholar in 2017 of LaSalle College of the Arts, an Asian Cultural Council Fellow in 2018, and a public international law master student at the Royal University of Law and Economics, University of Paris 8. So welcome both of you. And uh, so today we're going to discuss this book um, about Van Nat's paintings. And so um, I wanted to start with you, Sian, if that's okay. Yes, sure, thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so it's a pleasure. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to say that this is a really remarkable book and, and that's it's been crafted with so much care 
and so much tenderness and respect, respect and love for Van Nat. I, it really comes through. It comes through in each of the chapters within the book and all of the seven contributors, which includes CN, who's far to the person who put the whole book together. Um, each of those chapters, though, is so is done with such care and um, with such insight. Um, and it really does a great service to the memory of Vanette. Um, and I think that you'll you'll see that as we go go along tonight. Um, so um, yes, yeah, you wanted to say something, Sian? No, I just say thank you. <laughs> And it's it's um, yeah, it just shows what a beautiful person Vanat really is. Um, so this book, though, is it's a it's a really a true gift of memory to Vanat. And the, you know, this essay, your story, is so much a part of the making of of this book. And you know, in the beginning of the book, you tell your story, and then you also then you tell Vanat's story. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you is if you could tell us a little bit about how your story uh, led to, you know, your, your meeting with Vanna and the intertwining of your stories then together. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, when uh, I... When I grew up uh, in France, I uh, I always uh, wanted to be like the the other uh, children, the other kids, and uh, well, we we happened to to be living in a, a small city when there were well there were only French uh, white skin regular uh, persons, and um, I remember that I just wanted to be like them, I, I didn't want to be any different from them. And um, well, we were the only Asian in the city and uh, my parents didn't really speak French very well. Uh, so, so for me, it was a uh, very uh, difficult to uh, appear different to, to the, the other people. And uh, so I, I, I try to just uh, refuse uh, the. Um, I try to to hide uh, my identity as a son of uh, immigrants, and um, when I when I was uh, around twenty three years old, I started question myself uh, about um, me, my identity as a French person. And uh, I, I felt I, I read, uh, I read books, and uh, I, I came, um, I realized that uh, I had to, to embrace um, the, the the story of uh, my family and uh, my my composite, uh, my multiple uh, identities as a uh, son of uh, Asian immigrants. And uh, as a French, uh, as a French, uh, um, French uh, citizen, a French, uh, a French man, myself, and uh, so I realized that I completely uh, ignored by uh, wanting to to hide uh, my uh, identity as a son of uh, Asian immigrant. I uh, completely ignored the story of my parents, and. Uh, when I started to question, to to ask them questions about this, uh, I, I just um, they could not they could not really uh, uh, reply. I, they cannot really reply to my answers because uh, it was linked to a very painful past, and uh, that's how I started searching by myself, and I I then uh, found. Um, paintings of Vanat uh, on uh, the internet and uh, it deeply shocked me and uh, and um, when I had the opportunity to meet him in 2006 uh, in France uh, I realized that he was the the, the, the gate to uh, the, this mysterious past uh, this uh, 
mysterious traumatic past that my parents went through. And uh, well, um, in 2000, um, in 2009, uh, when I when I was visiting uh, Cambodia for the I think the, the third time, um, Vanad told me about a project of. Uh, uh, making a, a book that would uh, show you know, his paintings and uh, uh, f as a graphic designer, I, I naturally uh, offered to, to help him to, to do this. And uh, unfortunately, uh, well, uh, he could not see the, the end of this project because it was very uh, lengthy. Um, but uh, yeah, so this book was published uh, uh, in March uh, 2022. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, <laughs> there are so many things to say that uh, I think that if I start getting into well, too much details, uh, <laughs> it will take uh, three hours. <laughs> well, well, let me let me let me uh, ask you a, another another question. Then I, I think that 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 story though speaks volumes about the importance of of Vanette's work and his contribution to the memory of the Khmer Rouge past, you know, not just his own memory and those that lived through it, but the next generation like yourself as well, that it obviously, it, as you, you said, it was a gate, uh, yeah. a gate for you into that past. And, and um, I'm sure that it is also for other people as well. So I, I'm really glad that you you brought that up and, and that you raised that. So let me just move on for a minute to his paintings you collected in this book a lot of different paintings a lot of work that I haven't seen before um and I'm wondering one is how how did you put that how did you find those paintings how did you put pull, pull the collection together and also secondly is there is there any paintings that you would particularly like to share with us um today uh yes yeah, so it was a uh... It was indeed a lengthy process because uh, most of uh, the, the the people who purchased uh, paintings of Vanette uh, live abroad, and uh, it was uh, it was a kind of investigation to uh, <laughs> to connect and uh, contact uh, uh, those uh, those paintings uh, owners, and um, yeah, we have owners uh, that are spread uh, in the U.S. Uh, in uh, France, in uh, Germany, in uh, Norway, in uh, um, Australia, uh, Hong Kong, and so on and so forth. So, yes, it, it took uh, quite a, a lot of time. Uh, um, our initial project was to to collect uh, every existing painting of uh, Vanat, uh, but well, that's a uh, I think uh, at least it's uh, important to uh, to use this book as a first step, and if we later on we, we get to, to to connect to to more owners, then uh, we'd be happy to 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 include uh, further additional paintings. Yeah. Um, yes, so, so there are a lot of Vanat mostly is uh, known uh, for uh, his paintings uh, about the, the Merouge. Um, the paintings that are shown in the Tuslang uh, Genocide Museum in Phnom Penh uh, that are depicti depicting the, uh, describing the, the tortures um, perpe perpetrated by the, the, the Khmer Rouge uh, to the prisoners. And, um, and, uh, uh, well, it's uh, for, for for us. It was also important to 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 bring a, a wider uh, look at uh, the, the the body of work of uh, of Vanat, uh, which uh, indeed was uh, was um, very important um, as a witnessing work. Uh, but uh, I think what the the goal with this book was uh, to 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 make it more un understandable uh, to the people that it was not it could not be uh, to only um, simplified and uh, restricted to to this uh, or as um, only uh, witnessing uh, the, the horror but uh, 
as a uh, understanding as well as the the vanat as a as a human person. So uh, in this book we we have um uh, we have uh, paintings that are I I, I might start to share my screen and uh, comment on uh, the the paintings maybe. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. So share. So uh, I think maybe uh, I could start uh, on talking about uh, the, the, the the paintings uh, the artist in his cell that is one of the the painting that is shown uh, at the permanent exhibition of the Tulslang uh, Genocide Museum. It is a self uh, portrait of uh, Vanat as a prisoner in uh, his cell, and uh, Vanat. Uh, was uh, liked to to draw parallels and uh, and uh, talk about uh, mirrors. Um, he he never spoke about just one side of things. He always tried to to see uh, on both sides. So as a what what was very striking. I, I don't know if uh, if a lot of people seen the uh, the, the movie, the documentary film of uh, Riti Pan. Uh, S21, the, the Khmer Rouge uh, killing machine. Uh, Vanat tried to, to bring his, uh, his point as a survivor, but tried uh, as well throughout the film to understand the, 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 the viewpoint of uh, the, the, the jailers, the, the jailers, the, the Khmer Rouge uh, uh, jailers in uh, this movie. And uh, I think it's here in this painting. Uh, where he described, he, he showed, show, he, he, uh, he shows uh, his condition as a prisoner. Uh, it's important to to link this uh, with uh, another painting, uh, which is uh, the the painting of the the, the verdict of Louis. Uh, I remember having read a, a text uh, of uh, Alexander uh, Hinton highlighting the parallels between uh, these paintings of uh, Vanat and this painting of the verdict. The second painting is uh, representing uh, Dui uh, after uh, the, the decision of the, the Khmer Rouge uh, of the ECCC, the, the, the Khmer Rouge Tribunal. Um, and uh, um, Alexander Hinton highlighted how similar uh, those uh, two paintings look. Uh, the Duit is uh, standing in uh, approximately the, the same position uh, than uh, than Vanat uh, back in uh, this uh, this painting that is shown at the Toulouse Genocide Museum. Uh, by the way, it was the first painting that uh, Vanat started to to, to paint uh, uh, about uh, the, the Khmer Rouge. Um, he wanted to. Uh, to, to Alexander Hinton uh, thought that uh, Vanat painted uh, this painting of Duit, uh, uh, being inspired by uh, the, the first painting uh, of himself in uh, the S21 prison. So S21 was the, the, the name of the, the, the Khmer Rouge prison in, in Phnom Penh that has now been turned into uh, the, the Prozac Genocide Museum. And uh, well, they are standing in the, the same position, but instead of the, the, the walls uh, of the cell that you have in this first painting, here in the second painting, you have a, a pile of skulls and uh, you have a, an imaginary uh, landscape um, that for me conveys the idea of uh, eternity. And uh, instead of having uh, is, um, is anchored, uh, shackled uh, by uh, by a chain uh, here. Um, Dui has a uh, has the, the the book of the verdicts uh, near uh, his ankle. So uh, the, so um, Alexander Hinton uh, uh, thought that in fact the shackle of uh, Dui was the verdict uh, of uh, the tribunal. He was uh, convicted as uh, uh, being uh, responsible for the death of, uh, uh, I think at that time was uh, 
1200 uh, 12480 uh, uh, prisoners and uh, to Vanat it was very uh, meaningful that though it was uh, officially uh, convicted uh, for his crime uh, because then uh, it will make him enter in the history books as uh, being uh, forever uh, uh, guilty uh, of um, of his crimes and therefore it would uh, uh, it would grant the, the the official status to the victims uh, as well so the suffering of the victims will not have been in vain and uh, uh, well uh, in fact i happen to have found um, uh, found in uh, the, the the drafts of uh, van Nat, uh, a sketch for this painting which is here and uh, here you can see that initially he really shackled, um, he really put a shackle on uh, the Dutch uh, anchor here with the number here 35 written here. And 35 was the, the, uh, the initial um, uh, number of years that uh, Dutch was uh, convicted in, uh, the, by the tribunal in uh, 2009. So, and here you even have maybe something that would look like uh, the, 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 the box, uh, the metal box here, where the prisoners were, well, were, were asked to, uh, to, put, uh, to put their, their uh, how do you say, I forgot yeah. to, 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 yeah, to, def to defecate in the box. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the idea of Vanat is that, uh, I think in this painting is that uh, Duke is uh, the prisoner of uh, eternity now. And uh, uh, he will forever be the prisoner of eternity for his crimes to the victims. And, uh, and it's, it will be forever thanks to the official role of uh, the tribunal uh, into convicting him for his crimes. So that was the, the, the first painting that I wanted to talk about. I know that you, you asked me to talk about only one painting, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, you could paint it, talk about it as, as, as many as you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, I think it was uh, important to, to highlight um, how he uses uh, his own, uh, his own uh, image, um, uh, not in a, in a like, self-centered way, but uh, on the opposite, as a vector uh, to, uh, to, to, to being uh, like a spokesperson uh, for the victims. Spokesperson is, is maybe, a, uh, it's maybe not a, the, the right way to say it, but uh, at least uh, as a, uh, someone who, who can uh, speak for the victims, who can uh, carry their voices because he was one of the, the rare survivors. Um, and I think maybe on the, this second one, I don't know if I anticipate one of your questions. This one is a, a painting of Vanat that has been painted in 2008. And uh, the title of this painting is Pray for Peace. Uh, we in uh, the, the the book, uh, Rasme is uh, has uh, has written a text uh, about this painting. So I don't know, uh, Rasme, if, if you you want to to comment on this painting with me. Yeah, that, that, that's a that's a, a good idea. I was going to add some. Wanted to ask Rasme about something that he wrote about that painting too. But why don't you two go ahead? Is there something that. You, you want me to say something now? You want to uh, start first? Yes, sure. I think um, I think we can uh, we can go with the flow. And uh, well, I think uh, now the painting that uh, I showed before uh, of Vanat were dealing, I think, with the the, the Khmer Rouge subject, which was uh, very essential to him. Uh, but uh, it was not. Uh, it was not 
the, the subjects of his paintings were one were not only restricted to to, to this, and uh, I think that this painting "Pray for Peace" is uh, quite uh, a bridge uh, between I think uh, his uh, more peaceful paintings and uh, and uh, the Khmer Rouge paintings. So what 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 do you think, uh, Resme, about how yeah. would you how would you uh, um, locate uh, this painting in uh, the, uh, the body of work of Van Nat? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think my job in the book was to kind of highlight the uh, influence of Buddhist practice or Buddhist uh, philosophy in uh, Om Van uh, work or thinking. But, yeah. And also to kind of highlight the other dimension of his artistic practice that not really associated with, um, with, uh, with the remarkable scenes of the Khmer Rouge. And I think this was, for me, an entry point of, uh, of, of looking at his uh, other, other works. And I see a lot of common threads within this work, especially the, the self-portraiture that uh, Zhong Sen uh, discussed earlier, and also the, the women. The, the subject of women. But, you know, when I look at this, the, when there is a combination of uh, self-portraiture and women, it immediately uh, suggests a, a kind of not, not a, a, a question of gender, but I don't know how to really put it. I, I want to use the word transgender or trans uh, uh, sexuality or whatever it is in that sense, but I can't even uh, find a way to express it. But I'm not looking at these images necessarily only just for women i can i can see him in these pictures uh because you know comparing the self the, the the facial features of these paintings uh with other of his uh they are quite they are quite similar so i i think i i feel like he's seeing himself as both a representation i think or sp spoke person as you said uh Shang Sen, though not the right word um of the genocide, but at the same time as the resistance toward the toward the Khmer Rouge, as I see the waving of the, the wave of the water and the sea in itself as the symbol of that. I, I will just leave it as it. Yes, I think uh, actually uh, I think that uh, the the storm and uh, the 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 ocean and uh, the is a. Uh, is an allegory of uh, the the war probably um, the war and uh, maybe the the Khmer Rouge and uh, here in the first row in fact we can see uh, elderly people who are like the the first uh, barrier to to the storm and uh, behind we see uh, younger people so. Uh, Van Nat in uh, his, his later works was uh, like to use a lot of uh, symbols, uh, uh, in fact. And uh, yeah, I think the, uh, what you, you wanted to tell about the self portraits is that uh, which we, what maybe we, we could tell about the self portrait is that uh, Van Nat, by the end of his life, uh, didn't only. Um, uh, self-portrait him uh, directly, uh, but uh, he self-portrayed him uh, maybe through uh, it would be a generational self-portrait, I guess, uh, by putting the the elder in front of the the, the storm because they might have been through uh, the storm before and uh, might want to to pray to protect the the younger uh, generation. From what they have uh, been been through, and uh, the fact that uh, in these paintings there are many women is very interesting. I think because uh, he tries to uh, include, I think, uh, as well as uh, not only the men but uh, the the women as well. Uh, maybe because the women have a, a, a heavy duty uh, within the community and uh, the, the family traditionally. And um, well, I think it's a, it's a very interesting painting. Uh, that. Uh... Yes, it certainly is. And uh, one of the things that I, that I wanted to ask about it that you mentioned, um, Rex May in your chapter 
there is you talk about the the sea quite a bit as well. And um, I was sort of looking at that in, in comparison with another painting that you also talk about close to the same nearby when you're talking about this painting. Um, but on this painting, one of the things that you mentioned, and it was kind of in a footnote, granted, but um, one of the things you mentioned is the mythical connection with the sea. And you talk about, you mentioned Ye Mao, and you talk about, so you make this connection with the story of Ye Mao, which sets off the whole story of Ye Mao that she's out at sea and um, she's running away and she's on the boat and she's pregnant and so forth. Um, it's a, a very interesting story and connection, but you talk about that in this painting. And then in another painting, the village of my birth painting, you talk about, um, and I actually have the quote here, an ideal aesthetic of the Cambodian landscape, which quote, invokes the peaceful Cambodia that it once was. Um, and with these two, with these two paintings and these two ideas, when you're talking about landscape, you're talking about te temporalities within that and that the myth component on the sea one would be a part of that. And so I was wondering if you, if you would be willing to talk a little bit more about that here. You mean uh, the temporality of the landscapes? Yes. Um, yeah. Like paintings and, and like the, the context, of course. Yeah. That you know what, what? When I look at the painting of one at the birth of my, uh, the birth, the birth of my, play, uh, no, the place of my, <laughs> I, I can't even grasp the, the title that Johnson helped me here because uh, it's not really a, his title, but uh, yeah, I think it was a village of my birth. Exactly, yeah, the village of my birth. It's it's it depicts uh, the landscape of uh, a countryside and his uh, homeland. And when I, look, when I look at this painting, it reminds me so much of the work of um, Nhuc Dâm, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Nhuc Dâm is another important Cambodian artist in the 60s, which uh, Roger Nelson, the curator of the National Gallery of Singapore, uh, wrote for his thesis. And uh, it, it reminds me of, uh, of Nhuc Dâm landscape, especially during the time when uh, when there is a war encroaching Phnom Penh and landscape seems to symbolize the concept conception of peacefulness, but also the idea of longing for 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 peace and for countryside, and um, so this is something that I'm I, I want to look at. So basically, you know, landscape and countryside as a symbolic expression of uh, Khmerness or Cambodianness, and um, and also peace or you know the 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 wanting to return to the historical past something like that and as for uh as for Yemao, what 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 interests me is to um you know we didn't johnson and i discussed this we didn't want to 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 sexualize the sea a lot but it just reminds me so much of the of of the concept of Yemao in a in, in the work of uh, Ang Julian. And, but also for me, uh, the sea itself is a, is a symbolize of, uh, at least in my own understanding of, uh, of what we call the Samotok in Khmer, so the sea of suffering. You know, I look at Jemal and the sea of suffering in that, uh, in that uh, uh, copulation, if you want, how you said in English, in this, in this relationship. Uh, so that's, that's 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 how I, I, I draw the, the connection or comparison between the both landscapes. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. So that painting you had up a moment again, a moment ago, Sian, um, was um that was that was the painting, the village of my birth. There was two there was two paintings of it. I was I was actually interested in that it seems to be the same painting from two different perspectives at two different times a day. Or yes, like there, there were two versions of uh, this painting. This one was the the first one, and there is another one uh, with a, a square one. Mm. So uh, this would be in this would be in Battambang then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me try to find it. Yeah. So is this would this be then the the man the under the tree it's supposed how is that supposed to be like when he's when he's young before yeah he... i think i think that's a reimagination of his uh, of of his uh, previous experience as a young boy tendering the 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 cow and or seeing the cow i don't know 
in uh, at, at his village in Paderborn. Uh, yes, he grew up as a son of a farmer, so uh, so I think it might be uh, indeed a, a memory of a peaceful, uh, peaceful, um, peaceful past that uh, he liked to remember. Um, maybe to, to balance uh, his memories uh, about war. Uh, during many times, uh, Vanad told uh, people that he would stop painting about the Khmer Rouge because it was too painful for him. But uh, every time he would, would get back at it, I remember that uh, when I asked him uh, about this, he told me that, uh, that his life did not uh, belong to him completely anymore, that uh, his life stopped uh, belonging to him uh, during the Khmer Rouge, uh, when uh, he, 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 was the, he became the only survivor of uh, the, the truck uh, that brought him from uh, Batambong to Phnom Penh in uh, Tulsang uh, uh, S21. Uh -huh. And that uh, he, he promised uh, that uh, they, they promised in the truck uh, within each other uh, that if one was uh, able to make it alive, then this one person uh, would have to tell uh, what really happened. And uh, he told me that uh, sometimes he, he wished to, to stop the, the nightmares and um, at the same time that uh, he cannot uh, think only about his own comfort, but uh, that he has to continue uh, his duty as a witness. He, do you, would you say that, um, how, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how his paintings um, changed over time? Uh, yes, he is well known at the, 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 the beginning of the book. Uh, we do show uh, the paintings that are that is the most well known about, uh, which are the the, the paintings uh, about the sorry, which are uh, oh no, I'm having software issues. Okay, no, and uh, it, that's going. Yeah, at the beginning of the book, we we start to show the the paintings that is well known about as a survivor and as a, a witness of uh, the of uh, the prison. Okay, that's doing some, stress. but uh, I think it's important. There are a lot of paintings that are very. Um, painful to watch, uh, which are depicting uh, the, the tortures happening in uh, S21. And uh, initially those paintings were shown uh, just uh, next to the, to the instruments of torture uh, in a way to explain uh, how uh, they, they use the, 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 different, uh, the, the different tools to torture the prisoners. Uh, but I think that uh, he, he needed uh, as well to uh, balance all of uh, this violence with uh, much more peaceful uh, memories and uh, paintings about the, the the countryside. Yeah, like uh, the one that we've seen before, uh, the village of my birth. Or oh, paintings are uh, really depicting uh, some uh, sceneries peaceful sceneries or uh, even uh, people uh, going to the pagoda. Uh, and uh, I think the, the, when we analyze uh, the, the paintings, the peaceful uh, paintings uh, of Van Nat uh, compared to his, um, his war paintings, uh, it can be interpreted as uh, the, the same the same mirror, uh, the reverse side of uh, the, the same uh, mirror. And um, 
I think uh, people argue that uh, the net uh, should be known um, as a, so only as a survivor, but I think that his uh, peaceful paintings show uh, as well uh, the, the human need for, for peacefulness, that the horror is too much to take, uh, that, it, that, it's, uh, that, that it really needs uh, uh, to be balanced uh, with peace. And uh, towards uh, the, the end of his life, uh, Vanat really was a, an advocate, uh, a strong advocate for peace. And it's even shown uh, in some of uh, his paintings um, uh, quite, uh, quite clearly. Uh, I think like this one, for example, uh, you you had um, yeah. brought up some sketches earlier. Yeah. Uh, and those I have to say I've never seen before. There was woodblocks and there's also sketches. And the, and the woodblocks was he was working with a, a Mexican artisan or something doing the woodblock work. Is that right? Um, uh, yes. In fact, uh, there, there was a Mexican uh, artist who uh, donated the uh, um, uh, edge print uh, machine to the Royal University of uh, the Fine Arts in uh, Phnom Penh. And um, he did a workshop with the students and uh, Vanat uh, participated in uh, the, the workshop. Mm -hmm. And uh, he produced uh, he produced etchings uh, uh, that are quite... Um, that show that uh, he's, he's still tied to uh, his condition of a prisoner. Even to the very end of his life, he, he still uh, saw himself uh, as, a, as a prisoner. He could not uh, depart him from, uh, from his, uh, this image of prisoner, prisoner, uh, former prisoner of the S21 prison, and I think maybe prisoner of uh, his memories. At, uh, that this role as a um, prisoner would serve the freedom of uh, other people instead um, mm -hmm. by being able to testify about uh, the, the, the horror and uh, he, would, he would be able to, to, to help to prevent this from happening again. And uh, yeah, uh, so even in uh, his uh, etching, uh, his very last etchings that were the last artworks that he produced, you could see that. You could see that he, you see the, this, um, this self-portrait in the S21 uh, prison. And uh, you see as well uh, this kind of etching uh, about a wolf uh, howling uh, at the moon, we see the, the, the skulls of the, the victims and uh, and uh, a spirit, uh, spirit small uh, house. I don't know if yes, maybe you can tell about uh, the the meaning of the, these houses, these small houses in Cambodia. Yeah, you mean the, the, the spirit house? Nepal, yes, no? this one. Yeah. yes, yes, this it's, one. Uh, it, it's not it's not a piece on screen, Johnson. Oh, it's sorry. Cool. Yeah. I'm not sharing my screen right now. You're sharing your screen, but you're sharing uh, the picture of um, in, uh, in the birth yeah. of my book. Yeah. OK, OK. Uh, share uh, screen. Yeah, I mean uh, about this. Yeah, I don't know. I, to me, it seems like it's it's both the uh, the 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 neta, the, the and the ancestry um, house. So Neta is, uh, is, is, uh, is the master of the landscape or in Khmer we call it or um, this is in itself is uh, a memorial for, as we can see in, in the paint, in, in this, uh, 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 the edge is uh, the skulls of the victims of those that are yeah. supposed to die. So I think it's also the memorialization of the, of the ancestry themselves. So I think that's that's what he's trying to to convey. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it was a really a subject that he, he did this this uh, etching multiple times. He did multiple versions of it. So for him, it was. Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's true for the wolf, but I heard that uh, in uh, uh, the, the, the here the, the the Khmer, the Cambodian people believe that. The, the 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 dogs they howl at night because they can see the the dead the spirits. Is it is it what what uh, you is it something that you know of? Or I I I think this is uh, yeah I think when I was young because I grew up in Battambang where well, Vanat grew up as well so um. Uh, my father is military, so I think it has something to do with the thinking of the wildness. <laughs> so yeah. at night, we was, uh, they would say, oh, the, not, not only the, the wolf, but the dog themselves, they can see the, the ghost. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's, it's quite, it's quite um, true in that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can, I think Zhang Sanju want to show also the, the very last painting that he made, the one that he carried a piece of... Uh, sculpture from the Musée Guimet. I think this is something we should also kind of uh, discuss because oh, you... it show a different di dimension of, his, uh, of yeah. his artistic work. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me try to find it. So... Gives everyone a nice overview of the book, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, can I remember what it is? Maybe while you're looking for that, maybe I'll just ask Rex my a question. Yeah, and then... uh, let me just stop, share my screen. I find it and get back to you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So Rex, may I wanted to ask you uh, a little bit since about um, about with the use about how do you feel that Vanat's paintings and so forth? How how do you have you observed it? How anything about how young people today are connecting with these paintings? Do they connect with them in a different way than the older generations? Are there particular paintings that you've noticed that are particularly, you know, particularly speak to the younger generations? It's quite a very difficult question, you know? <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> I'm on the spot. <laughs> His work is not much shown in, in Cambodia beside the S21 Museum. Uh, that's because most of his work are abroad, not really in Cambodia, right? Um, but one thing that I can think of is because I, I, I was introduced to Van Nat because um, I was a student at Fire and Louis Salapak in Battambong and uh, uh, through particular this workshop by uh, Soko Pai. So I was introduced to him uh, through, through this book, not in person. I met him the very first and last time in 2011 in, uh, in person. Other than that, I'm, I only see his, his work. But unlike other people, uh, I was introduced to both sides of his work, not only the remarkable sense of the S21 or the, or, or the genocide, oh, but I also okay. see his, uh, his, uh, his works related to the religion, but also related to the landscape, the women, so all of this work as well. But what I can say for sure is that um, his, his, um, his, we respect him as a younger generation, especially for us from Fapun Park, because he led this workshop with uh, participants from Fapun Park, at, at least eight of them. And we respect his, uh, his, 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 his approach to uh, and how he coped with his, the memory of the past. But also, as Zhang Sen said, as, a, as an agent of transmitting uh, knowledge or revealing what the past holds. Um, I think that's, that's the reason why I also want Zhang Sen to kind of bring out the, the, the painting uh, that he carried, one of the, the statue, death, yeah, exactly, from, uh, from the music he made. You know, what I look at this painting, I, 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 it's, it's kind of ironic, but at the same time, it's a, a, a premonition of what is happening now in terms of art restitution from, from, from different countries that the Cambodian government has been doing for a long period, uh, for almost two decades, three decades now. Um, but one thing that I, I look at it is the, the fact that 
it seems to suggest the idea of this um, older generation as the barrier of the past and the barrier of the um, of the moral and social um, uh, order of Cambodia, which in itself represent the Cambodian civilization. And they are uh, the one that can allow this thing to, 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 to permeate in, in the future. And when I look at this painting, you know, he's, he's not reaching Cambodia yet. It's just an imagination. It's just a, uh, a, a, an expectation. And he left this job, I suppose, to the younger generation to pick it up. Here, the music in my piece is, could be a symbolize of the Cambodian objects abroad, but at the same time, a representation of the Cambodian Khmerness and the civilization that's known as the Angkor or things that are related to Angkor, not necessarily the, the, the empire itself. Yeah, I want to stop here. Thank you. Right, that's that's very interesting. I mean, that looks like it's the um, Eiffel Tower in the background. Yes, it is. Uh, in fact, it's also a memory um, of Vanat when he went to visit Paris. He went, went to visit the Guimet Museum uh, in Paris. And uh, which is a museum that holds a lot of uh, uh, sculptures of uh, Cambodian Khmer sculptures, and uh, he told that he dreamt of bringing them back to Cambodia. He saw that they were so beautiful in the museum and that they belong to Cambodia. So he dreamt of bringing them back back to Cambodia on his back. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's that's the painting yeah. I saw when, in person when I met him. Uh, in 21, like the first and the last time. And he, he kind of say, he, he said, 2011, sorry. 2011. Uh, yeah, yeah he, he said, I cannot bring it. I know that I cannot bring it back to Cambodia now. And I know mm. the, 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 the interrelated, uh, sorry, I, I know the legal system and things like that. So, uh, he, you know, it also, what you said, which uh, to me, which you didn't mention here today, Johnson, is the, is the fact that when Ombanat also understand the legal procedures around it, the, the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, and yeah. you, you hint a bit to the, the verdict of, of Deutsch. So yeah. he kind of understand the legal procedure and also using this legal procedure as the way to, uh, to, to, to create the historical, historical account. So, uh, yeah. In, yes, in the case I have... Of Deutsch, uh... Uh, yeah. I have an anecdote uh, about this. Um, uh, in 2009, when uh, the tribunal announced uh, the verdict of uh, Dui, the initial verdict of uh, Dui, he was convicted to 35 years in prison, and they would subtract that from uh, the years that he spent in detention. It would be like uh, more than 10 years and and at the end, he, he would end up only with uh, 18, 18 years in uh, in prison. Everybody was so shocked because how being convinced uh, of the, the, the death, uh, of, uh, of being responsible for the death of uh, uh, more than uh, 10,000 of uh, people, how, how could, could it lead to such a, a, light, uh, a light verdict? And... Um, Everybody was very, very shocked at that time. And I, I called uh, Vanat on the phone and I asked his opinion about this. And uh, he told me that that the most important for him that uh, that was uh, that Duit was officially convicted by an official tribunal because therefore he will uh, uh, appear in the forever as being a criminal. Uh, in the history, even in 50 years, in uh, 100 years, it would still be a, a, a criminal uh, uh, to the history. And that was the most important thing because uh, any number of years could not anyway uh, uh, be, uh, uh, be, be, uh, be fair or be balanced to uh, the gravity of his crimes. So uh, the most important thing was to think uh, about the, how uh, the victims would be perceived uh, in the future. And that really struck me about uh, uh, how he, 
he didn't only live in the the scope of his uh, own life, but uh, he he perceived uh, the fate of, of uh, the status of the victims uh, beyond. And uh, that's why I think it was very important for, for him to, to share his uh, experience with uh, the next generation. And uh, it is uh, shown, uh, in fact, a bit in... Um, so let me... Uh, let, just tell me if you, you can see uh, my screen clearly, because now I, I, I had earlier some conflict between my, my mouse and uh, my uh, and my uh, trackpad. I, I think I'm sorry about that. I think, uh, but uh, there there is a painting about the turtle. But let's just, let's turn that off and. Uh, show this painting. And can I share this painting this time? C can you see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a collective painting that uh, Vanat uh, did in uh, 2009 mm -hmm. during a workshop with uh, young artists uh, that was uh, organized by uh, uh, Soko Pai and uh, the um, uh, uh, at the, the Bopana Center at that time. And uh, Vanat uh, started to, to draw a, a turtle uh, escaping the, the, the fire and, uh, and uh, almost reaching uh, the destination of uh, a pond. Um, and uh, he, he started to, to, to draw uh, the, the, the turtle and ask the students to, to keep on drawing with him and it was really a symbolical way for him i think to uh to try to uh, uh to make to 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 include the the next generations to uh, the to the um, to the importance uh of uh, of of the horror and uh uh, understanding the importance of the horror uh, would be uh, a, a way to prevent it from uh, it from happening again. So I think he, he he tried to reach to the next generation in order to uh, to to continue uh, his fight uh, to make uh, the the victims uh, not being uh, forgotten. Uh, to make the fate of the victims uh, being uh, acknowledged uh, beyond the, the scope of his own life. Yeah, that's that's a really uh, that's a really remarkable ex example. I, I have to say, if I would have just seen this painting of this turtle, I wouldn't have known how to interpret it that way, and I wouldn't have known that he had you know these young people helping you know helping him draw it and being part of that painting. So thank you definitely for sharing. And it really ties back to our conversation actually before the webinar started about the transmission of memory. Um, but one, one thing I wanna do right now is, is I just wanna let the audience know that they're welcome to um, send their questions into the Q&A box. Um, there's one question in there right now, um, which, yeah. we, which I'll go ahead and, and, and share with you here. Um, so and if anybody else would like to send their questions, then please send them in. Uh, it says, uh, hi, my name is Nellis. I learned that the paintings that you have shown to us are from the post-genocide period. So I want to ask whether Vanette managed to produce any paintings during the genocide. During, uh, du du during the, the genocide between uh, 19... Uh, 75 and uh, 1979. Yeah, I think uh, that's what she's she yeah. referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did, in fact, uh, <clears throat> for, for people who don't know the, the story of Vanat, uh, uh, Vanat was, uh, was a painter uh, before the, the, the Khmer Rouge. And, um, and when, he was, um, when he was held as a prisoner, in uh, the S21 prison, which was the prison of the Khmer Rouge in, in Phnom Penh, uh, the capital of uh, Cambodia. Uh, he, his life was spared, uh, actually, uh, in order to use him and make him paint 
uh, propaganda portraits of uh, Pol Pot. And, um, and so, so the only paintings that he, he could produce during that time were, were paintings, uh, portraits of, uh, of Pol Pot. Propaganda. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, the rest of the time uh, he, he he had to work in the rice fields, like uh, the all of the the other uh, Cambodians. Yeah. And uh, maybe yeah, I can maybe I can share a, a painting of uh, Vanat showing to to do uh, a, a portrait of Pol Pot. Um, no, I know the painting you're thinking of. Yeah, that's yeah. an painting. And, uh... That painting was also featured in S S21 uh, film by Vertipan. Yeah. So maybe while you're you're looking for that painting, um, I yeah. think ask uh, Rex May for a minute. Um, Rex May, your chapter, you talked a lot about Buddhism, uh, the connection of, of Vanat and, and um, Buddhism and how Buddhism is incorporated into his work. Would you like to say a few words about that? Yeah, I think when, when I met Vanat, he, he always projects this calm posture. You know, I always ask myself, what is there anything has to do, uh, contributing in, uh, in his uh, calmness, you know. And then I, I read about his uh, biography, uh, his biography and found that he himself was ordained, uh, was in the mon monastery. And also, you know, uh, exposed himself to this uh, Buddhist narrative on, on the wall painting, the mural painting on the wall of the, of the Buddha, uh, History, uh, how you say this now in English? I can't. I'm sorry. I'm still in my morning mood. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> As a morning person myself, I totally understand <laughs> um, the story yes. of Buddha's life. Yes, and yeah. I, I think he was exposed to to to, to this uh, story and uh, also the stylistic feature and and also the uh, composition. And I think that how it influenced his. Uh, his work later on in life, but he's, he's himself uh, also for me, I think at least um, influenced so much of the Buddhist philosophy as well, of the idea of impermanence, but also I think Ashley Thompson called it, I like to quote her, she called it self-mastery. And that self-mastery is, is the idea of, uh, you know, removing the self, not necessarily the ego of it, but uh, but at the same time taking over uh, the self, and I think that's that speaks very well to uh, the, the 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 work that I I, I mentioned, uh, the praying for peace. So you can see this idea of uh, self mastery uh, also within this painting. Yeah, I I will just stop here. <laughs> okay. Well, looks like we have yeah. these things up. Um... Yes, so, so uh, I found uh, the paintings uh, representing uh, Vanat as a prisoner, showing to Duke, who was the director of the S21 prison, um, propaganda portrait of uh, Pot Pot. And uh, those were the only kind of works that uh, he could uh, actually produce on during uh, the, the Khmer Rouge time. Okay, thank you. So we have a, a couple more questions here. Um, uh, do you know how Van Nat would describe himself and his work? Would he describe himself as a witness, an artist, an activist? What was his main drive to produce the paintings? Oh, I think he would rather describe himself as a witness. And uh, what was surprising is that uh, even during the, the Khmer Rouge, um, the ECCC, the Extraordinary uh, Chambers, uh, um, International Tribunal of the Khmer Rouge, um, 
he didn't uh, he didn't uh, want to be a civil to be a part of the civil party and uh, asking for any reparation uh, but uh, instead he only wanted to have the status of a witness so um, uh, before uh, being an artist or an, an activist uh, yeah he would describe himself as a survivor and uh, as a witness uh, and uh, yes his art just serve in fact uh, the, his, uh, his role uh, as a witness his arm is um is not really driving him but his art has uh, uh, saved him has uh, helped him to to survive uh, the, the the Khmer Rouge by uh, not being sent to uh, the, the the killing field with the other prisoners uh, thanks to his skill and and uh, after the, the Khmer Rouge uh, time uh, ended, then uh, his art served him to to witness, to uh, to describe what uh, he he went through, and his art even uh, helped him to express uh, his hopes uh, for for peace and uh, his uh, uh, his will to share his experience and uh, the status of the, the victims with the next generations. Right. Okay, so there's, um, if you can pull up the one of the turtle again, because this next question pertains to the painting with the, the turtle. Sure. Um, and I'll read you the question while um, you're pulling that up. Um, yeah. I'd ask another question regarding the painting of the turtle. It seems to me that the turtle is a representation of the Cambodian people. Can you explain why the turtle was chosen? Uh, oh, okay, let me just so stay. Uh, share my screen. Okay, so. I think yes, it could be a, a, indeed a, a representation of the the Cambodian people, not only uh, as uh, Vanat himself, but maybe as the the, the, the victims. So they they maybe uh, had to endure, and uh, the the daughter, I think, to go from uh, had a, 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 how do you, do you call that uh, in English? Share. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just uh, add a shell to, 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 I think it might be a, a, an allegory for the, the shelter. So uh, being uh, able to, uh, to, 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 to endure the, 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 the heat of uh, the fire, uh, the fire probably is an allegory to, to the war. And uh, that uh, even by uh, making even if it's uh, slow and uh, difficult to get to the pond, uh, in the end, by by trying uh, uh, by trying to uh, to to resist is uh, what uh, the total must do uh, uh, in order to to able to to survive. Yeah. Right. You have a section in the book that's called endurance. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, endurance was the the, the the name of a series of uh, of self portraits of Vanad that were uh, explaining uh, his experience from uh, the time that he was uh, captured in Batambang uh, up to uh, the, the the time that he was uh, he was able to uh, to escape uh, the S twenty one prison uh, in Phnom Penh and. Uh, uh, endurance, I think it can be uh, indeed related to as well to uh, this uh, this symbol of uh, the turtle uh, that um, that uh, uh, endurance it means it, it means uh, it, it means that uh, it was a uh, it brings it was a struggle it was a. Uh, 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 a struggle, uh, a physical struggle, 
uh, and uh, I think it's uh, also a, a struggle from from the past and from the, the present uh, as well. But uh, the, a struggle that has uh, indeed uh, that has a goal, in fact, to, that uh, the share of uh, this uh, struggle is to prevent uh, others from uh, strugg struggling the same way. Yeah, and it's also an interesting thing with this painting also, with that being the representation is the turtle doesn't, isn't able to move that quickly. So it's enduring yeah. the times, but there's, it's not that it can get to that pond very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, there's, there's another question here up that's asked about where are the paintings that are not at Tulsaling? Um, you've got quite a lot of paintings in the book and there's more paintings that are, that are not in the book. Do you, is there, is there um, how are they, dis, where are they, how are they distributed? Oh, they are, they are located uh, abroad, um, mostly by private uh, owners. Um, so I think uh, we have quite a few in the, in the US, actually. Uh, we have also a lot in Germany. Um, and we have some in France, some uh, in Cambodia, some uh, in Norway. Um, in very different places because the owners came uh, in Cambodia to visit. They knew about Vanat, so I think it was uh, also a way of both uh, supporting him uh, as a as a painter by uh, and as a witness, but uh, it was also a way of um, supporting him financially. I think. Because Vanat was very sick, he had a kidney uh, a kidney issue, so he had to uh -huh. to go uh, many times in a week uh, on uh, to dialysis. And um, initially, we created our association, uh, Le Cercle des Amis de, de Vanat, to help him uh, support this medical expense, this medical expenses, so that he, he could keep on painting, focusing. He could keep focusing on painting instead of uh, dealing with uh, those medical, uh, lingering medical uh, issues. Thanks. Um, I, I, one, one thing that I wanted to mention, I think Zhang Sen forgot, is that the book is not an exhaustive uh, compilation of uh, Van Aert's work. I think we believe there are works, his works somewhere else that we haven't identified yeah. yet. And with this book, we hope at least to, to promote and to, to appeal to those who may have the paintings and we can identify more paintings along the way. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, the, the, the book was done with, that, uh, with the current material that we have about uh, Vanat artworks. Uh, and uh, it's, the, the goal of the book is just to represent uh, the trajectory, the artistic trajectory, uh, the, in a more general way than just the, the Khmer Rouge uh, paintings of uh, Vanat. And sure, if uh, if people among the audience know of other owners of, or of paintings that are not included in the book, please <laughs> please uh, reach reach uh, back to us. We would be very very interested to to uh, to have additional paintings uh, uh, added uh, in the additional paintings in the future to be uh, included in the next edition of the book. So you're planning another edition. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, oh, another the thing I think I, I have to, I, I would like to, to, to come, to come back on is uh, the, uh, the, that the contribution of uh, the, the six authors uh, of the book. Um, so if, mentioned me as a contributor I don't know if I would I put myself in the forward uh, mostly to uh, to introduce the, the, the context on how uh, this this book how was uh, was uh, was produced um, but it's very important for, for me to, to mention the, the, the six authors so uh, Rasme of course is a, is one of them. And uh, we also have uh, this book would not have been made possible with it, uh, with without the contribution of uh, the of our authors. Uh, 
uh, we have a text of um, of uh, Anor Pore, uh, who who is a journalist and a researcher about the act of uh, torturing. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a text uh, about the subject of the, the torture, which is a, a uh, which is the, also the theme of the painting that uh, Vanette is the most uh, well known uh, about. Uh, we also have a text by uh, Ruti Pan that is a, a text um, that uh, remembering uh, Vanat uh, on the occasion of the 10 years year anniversary of uh, his passing. Uh, we have a text uh, by a French artist, uh, Sylvie Brochet, uh, who worked on uh, the subject of uh, genocide as well. And uh, which is describing uh, the intensity of uh, the material and uh, the aesthetic responsibility that uh, have to, to be considered uh, by, uh, by doing so. Uh, we have a, a text of um, Rasme that is, um, uh, that is describing and getting into more details about the, the painting Pray for Peace. Uh, that, so it's a painting that uh, also explores the Buddhist uh, aspect of uh, into into Van Nat work. Uh, we have a text by uh, Sarah Com, uh, who was uh, the closest friend of uh, Van Nat, uh, which is uh, telling about uh, Van Nat's uh, stay in the U.S. in uh, two thousand four, uh, and. It's a very moving and uh, personal memories uh, uh, with him. Uh, and um, yeah, lastly, we have a text uh, of uh, Zuko Pai, who helped to organize a workshop at uh, the Bopana Center with the young artists back in 2008 and 2009, uh, which uh, is uh, telling about uh, the importance uh, of sharing uh, his experience uh, to uh, the young generation, uh, to Vanat, uh, 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 how important it was to Vanna to share his experience to the next generation, not only by being uh, himself uh, the only uh, recipient of uh, the memories of the victims, but uh, by the, uh, but the importance, how important it was to him to uh, transmit this memory uh, beyond uh, his uh, own uh, uh, lifetime. Jung Zen just want to mention also the also this publication on Vanat as well. So, uh, in case somebody is interested, can you read the tide the, the 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 white print there because it's hard to see on the screen. It's called oh, Vanat yeah. uh, Tribute Home Tribute. Yeah, Vanat Tribute. It's called yeah. It's a book that uh, we did uh, back in. Uh, in uh, 2000, uh, 2013, uh, it was um, a book uh, that uh, that was a book of an exhibition that was organized uh, at uh, the Bupana Center by uh, by uh, artists uh, remembering uh, Van Nat. Um, and uh, uh, yes, that was uh, that was not a book about his artwork about uh, Vanat artwork, but about uh, the uh, homage or uh, tribute that uh, was paid by, uh, the, by other artists uh, to him. Hmm. One, one question I, I have um, uh, it, that, that I, you, you mentioned that the paintings that are, that are in this book are from various different sources. How did you track those? How did you track those paintings down? How did you find them? Oh, just by uh, by asking around, uh, asking to people who knew Vanat, uh, if uh, they would know uh, about the identity of uh, a buyer, and then those people would may sometimes know, sometimes not, and sometimes they would just uh, uh, introduce uh, introduce us. So it was me who search about uh, the paintings of Vanat and also Yvon Sharm, who is the current uh, president of uh, our association. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks to, 
to to him uh, as well uh, and i wish to to thank him uh, by the way for for this we were able to to, to find uh, around a uh, hundred paintings of uh, vanat and sketches and uh, yeah it was uh, it's it's uh, an on ongoing effort <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I wish you all the best of luck on tracking down more of them. Um, Thank so you. Another question here um, that I, before we run out of time here, that that's coming. And this question is for Rex May. Um, as someone who's very well connected to the art scene, do you know how Vanette's work and story still resonates or not um, within the arts community and youth in general? And how well known uh, is he in Cambodia today? I think the question is probably uh, only in the Cambodian art scenes in general, yeah? Um, you With, know, within the arts community and youth in general. So there's, he's asking uh, about both. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Jean Baptiste. <laughs> It's a very tough question to answer. <laughs> um, you know, as he, he, he's well known in the art community, at least for the visual art, uh, for visual artists, we know who he is and who he was. Um, as for his paintings or his work, um, for the younger generation, it's difficult to respond because as I mentioned earlier, we don't have museums beside the S21 that uh, uh, show his work, you know, and his work, if you want to see Van Nath's work, either you go to his studio, not, not much to see, <laughs> uh, or to go to S21 Museum, which uh, again, it only features work of the uh, things related to marriage and the genocide, not the aspects that we uh, features here in, in the book. You know, so in that sense, I don't know how his work perceived by the younger generation. It's, 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 it's hard to know. But whether or not his story resonates is another question. And I think um, in terms of marriage related subjects, uh, um, we, yeah, we always speak about his name. And um, I think, I don't know what, what kind of resonance it is, but um, we look at him as kind of a, I don't want to use the word model, but I can't avoid using that word as the one who is not shy away from telling the truth. And um, I think that's, uh, that's how we perceive him. I'm sorry, uh, Jean-Baptiste, if I answer your question or not, but that's how I can come up with now. <laughs> Yes, I, I think that uh, that Vanat, to um, from what I know, is quite uh, well known to the to the, the, the to the art scene even uh, even today. Uh, but is uh, a lot less uh, known to the general population here uh, in, in Cambodia. There is um, uh, a lot of people here try to to forget. People who went through that time try to, try to forget and have a lot of trauma about uh, this time and uh, having um, having uh, someone who 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 tells about it uh, it's it's quite uh, for, for them it's quite painful to experience. I I can also remember that back in two thousand nine I I came to visit Cambodia with uh, my parents and. Um, well, they, it was very difficult for my pa parents to, to talk about this. And uh, on, one, uh, on one occasion, Vanat uh, offered to invite, uh, invite us to, to, to his home. And, uh, and uh, well, my parents, it was too hard for them to, to go. So uh, I went only with my, 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 my sister and my, my brother. And uh, yeah, I think the, the, the fact that uh, Vanat is not well known uh, uh, in Cambodia is uh, directly linked to the, the fact that uh, the, the Khmer Rouge time was, uh, was, is still a trauma to, to a lot of people and, uh, and uh, people tend not to share about it, tend to try to, to forget it and uh, move away from it. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, there is two, uh, opposing big uh, opposing ideas one is that 
uh, in order to uh, to to be be happy in order to to you need to 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 get away from the pain uh, some people try to get away from from the pain by uh, by forgetting it and uh, some of the people think that uh, th think that on the the opposite in order to be able to to live uh, with the pain you have to accept it and uh, and yes uh, if you yeah. if you to accept it something is ringing i'm sorry that's okay um yeah i just i just wanted to add um yeah. you know yeah. uh, previously uh Johnson mentioned that om banat probably not call yeah. himself first as an artist but i think from the art community perspective we consider him as it was perceived one of the otherwise very, yes as absolutely. the first as the first artist you know absolutely, even, absolutely. yeah yeah and also the fact that his work is featured alongside bits of at the document that put his yeah. name you know as one of the household's name in the visual mm. art community yeah i think i yeah. just want to highlight that yeah. yeah i think it's uh it's correct uh, that uh, vanat uh probably himself uh, doesn't put uh, his art in front of uh, of uh, of uh, his uh, witnessing but uh, from, from from outside the perception from other people is that fanat is uh, maybe the uh, an ultimate uh, artist because the, 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 the his art is uh, dealing with uh, the extreme and um, and yes he's He's, he's out served him in uh, such conditions uh, that uh, that he's perceived as uh, being uh, the opposite of uh, what himself th thought of himself. Uh, he, he didn't. Uh, I, I don't think Van uh, would 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 say that he's uh, he considered himself as being an important artist, but rather as a as a unfortunate witness that uh, has to to carry the the uh, duty uh, which is to to bring the light on uh, the fate of uh, his companions uh, uh, during that time hmm. well, uh, thank you uh, maybe we can just finish off here with letting people know where they can buy this book where can people uh, it, where is it being sold now where can they where can they obtain a copy Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I had uh, That's okay. uh, audio cool. glitch. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I, I, can, I can respond to that question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the books are now available in Cambodia. And uh, we also yeah. accept orders from abroad. And unfortunately, not a bookstore in abroad uh, selling this, them yet. But, uh, but yeah, we can, you can find it in Cambodia at a gallery that I'm running called Salapat the Japanese STP and uh, Sasa Cambodian Art Project. And um, to a certain extent, you can also get a few copies from uh, S uh, S21 Museum itself. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so okay, I get uh, the, the question. Uh, from that, um, the books are currently uh, available in four different, five different uh, locations here in Phnom Penh. Unfortunately, not, not abroad yet. Uh, so it's available at uh, the, the gallery of uh, the Vanat Art Gallery, which is the gallery uh, that is held by uh, Vanat's own family. Uh, it's also available at uh, the gallery that is run by Rasme, uh, the gallery uh, Salopa, the Japanese uh, STP gallery, right? To, to, to. At the STP gallery, uh, at uh, the Soso. Our project um, gallery as well as uh, at um, Pichet uh, Design Shop and uh, at uh, Monument Books. Okay, uh, great. I can post uh, maybe I can I think I I might have uh, that uh, I can share that in my uh, you can put in my screen and then uh, you can just uh, screenshot it if you want. <laughs> uh, um, I, I just want to add that we also have um, the book at the Center for Khmer Studies Library. So if anyone's in Siem Reap um, then you, and you'd like to, to come see the book and read it, it's, um, it's at our library. So we'd be everybody's most welcome. 
yeah so yeah you can screenshot it if you want or you can just <laughs> uh, you can just uh, contact me <laughs> okay, okay well thank you very much this has been a, a really you know fascinating um webinar for me. Um, I've really, I really appreciate your, all your hard work, both of you on, on this book. It's a very important book and it's, it's a beautifully done book on top of it. And it's a beautiful thank you. to um, the memory of, of Vanette. So thank you. And thank you everybody uh, in the audience for being with us today. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you good for morning. having us. Have a good day and a good evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.